Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the Type 74 and this Japanese 8.7 battle rating medium slash main battle tank is a joy to look at and that's about it. N not really but that sums it up for me personally. Now usually I don't really enjoy high tier tank gameplay and um, I think there are, are always excuses for me to play lower tier for example to spade stuff to get a skin even before I play high tier stuff. However, uh, even a few months ago I was asked by some subscribers, hey, can you have another look at the Type 74? And I thought to myself, well, you know, it got a new shell, an AP FSDS shell, it's worth to have a look at. Um, yeah, so for me usually strange things happen for me in, in high tier because that's the reason why I don't enjoy it in the first place. Um, but here I just gave myself a kick, hey come on, let's play that tank, uh, one module left to upgrade and then it's faded again and yes, performance wise, gun wise, the tank is fully upgraded, I'm still just missing one smoke shell and that's about it and then the tank would be complete again. So in the background you see me here playing two games, the first one being a nice game but not very special for kills, spoiler alert. And the second one is then six kills on Abandoned Factory and that battle was just weird. Really, really weird and I have no explanation up until this point what happened there. So I'm recording this battle late at night, four o'clock in the morning. I just can't sleep like usual, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, Tab 74. What is this tank? What makes this tank special and so forth? So first of all, I think for the battle rating, you're looking at one of the most horrifying stock grinds in the game because you still rely on an L7 gun at bat rating 8.7. That is just outright... <laughs> uh, I mean, good luck performing very well with the stock APDS shell. Although you have increased penetration, Instead of 303 millimeters, we are looking at 321 millimeters. However, against the front plate or the turret front of a T64A, and also to reliably do the post penetration effect necessary to disable the tank or outright kill it, I wouldn't rely on this shell. T2 upgrade is the Hess shell. Well, mm, against again the front of a T64 with the composite armor or also the KPZ or MBT-70 with the spaced armor, you just don't deal the necessary damage. You could try to slung it under the tank or on the lower plate, but good luck, you know, doing that reliably with just 730 meters of muscle velocity. And then at tier four, there is the decision between the old um, LOL pan shell the M456 heat shell, heat FS shell, with 400 millimeters of penetration and a, and a muscle velocity of 1173 meters per second, or an AP FSDS shell with 360 millimeters of penetration with 1500 meters per second muscle velocity. What would you choose? Higher base pan or this weird AP FSDS shell. Well, funnily enough, I would go for the AP FSDS shell. Um, I prefer solid shots over chemical energy based weapon systems um, by default, but also this shell is fantastic. Okay, it has more post penetration effect than the heat shell. You can fire through buildings, certain buildings, through obstacles, through trees, wood, fences, which you can't do with the heat shell. And it also has better normalization, it uh, digs itself in, it also goes through composite armor, which the heat shell just doesn't, and it also goes through spaced armor, and it also goes through the entirety of the tank and deals massive damage. So I would go for this shell, and also it's, it's, it's just a, th a quarter of the shell cost compared to the heat shell, which cost a thousand civil lines per shot, and the M735 AP FSDS shell cost 260 civil lines, which is peanuts. You know, that's basically the cost of an APHE shell. So all benefits 
in my opinion, are on this shell, which is the recent addition to the Type 74. So what else has the tank going for it? Well, it has a top mounted 50 caliber machine gun. It looks cool. It has a stabilizer and it also is pretty fast, at least on paper. So turret rotation speed is 24 degrees per second. Okay, so that's not too bad. However, vertical guidance is just minus six degrees and vertical elevation is nine degrees. That is not the very best. However, you have hydro pneumatic suspension like the STB-1. But to really use it in battle, you know, you rarely come across the situations where you have the time to uh, elevate the tank or to flip it forwards or backwards, then get the gun on target, pull the trigger and actually get a kill out of the situation before you get spotted and uh, get shot at in return. The reload rate with 8.8 .8 seconds for an expert crew and 8.3 seconds for an ace crew feels not that competitive to be honest more than once i had to you know kill a tank with a follow-up shot and he nearly got into cover or actually got in cover and so forth the armor of the tank is well at this battle rating with the constant up tier not really worth much i mean the lower plate it, you know you bounce your usual APAG shells most of the time driver's edge is a weakness third front is okay-ish I'm not quite sure about the um, spall shield behind the turret if it's still there there were rumors it got removed there are rumors it's still there but it doesn't really work against APF SDS shell I got always shot through the hole and killed so I can't tell also I didn't have time for the usual test shooting so the armor, especially from the side, just 30 millimeters, that's Leopard weak. And uh, yeah, from the front a little bit bouncy, SPA will have difficulties penetrating you, but that's about it. Against APDS, APFSDS, heat FS shells, and even hash shells, you know, it looks a bit grim, let's put it that way. So, um, stabilizer, L7 gun, armor, but not that fast 38 tons flat out and 830 horsepower so that gives you a horsepower to ton ratio of 22 something like this with a top speed of 53 and the reverse speed of uh, i don't know around about 10 kilometers an hour something like this it has neutral steering however the tank feels a little bit too slow a bit too sluggish it's not a light tank um and it's just not quite there so now we are here in the second battle that i wanted to show you and i just got shot in the side um and this t64 thought i would just run away but i turned around made a little ambush for him and he fell for him and again we saw a benefit of the solid shot uh, that it goes through all the spaced armor the add-on armor on the side of a t64 where heat fs shells or atgms even would lose a lot of their penetration power however i'm down to just two crew members and now i suffer through the long reload because i don't have an autoloader like the french like the kpz slash mbt 70 like the t64a like the object 120 you name it okay so very often I got chunked down to just two crew members and then you don't have the highest base pen or the highest base reload in the first place so you have a hefty reload. I noticed this BMP1 and I didn't have time to warn the Leopard so I hull break this guy and um, yeah it was kind of lucky that the Leopard went around and at this point in time this is my third kill uh, the first kill was this TSU 57.2 that had bushes on top of the tank that actually gave its position away otherwise I would have been killed probably in the first few seconds of the game at this point in time we are already in the state of you know haunting the enemy at their spawn by the way I have no machine gun control even the coaxial machine gun is now no longer available to me because I'm down to just two crew members go figure it I saw an enemy tank, I just couldn't aim at it, and now I tried to ambush it. It looked like not a high tier tank, I'm not quite sure what it what it was, it looked like some sort of IS tank, I don't know. So 
here he doesn't go through the gap as I expected it and he appears to my right. There, there you see it and I was actually surprised that this T3485 just went around there and I just killed his driver and his radio operator and before I could reload he gets killed. So yeah, but I actually reload in time to be able to deal with an IS-3. Okay, so that should be the battle, right? I was actually really wondering how small the battle is or how small the matches are because this is again recorded late at night and the KPZ-70 loses the race against the 25 second timer through the uh, forbidden area around the spawn zones. I saw now here something shoot and I thought to myself, well, let's investigate it. And it's an M36 slugger. Okay, that's nice. So thank you very much. So this should be it, right? Uh, right? No. Um, somebody still spawns in. And he must be at the other spawn. So at this point in time, I thought it would be actually a good game, but it, it wasn't. Um, he spawned in. How the hell does this guy have still spawn points to spawn in in stuff? Um, I have no idea. At this point in time, I thought the last two players on the enemy team were actually bots that Gaijin throw in, throws in uh, occasionally to fill up the teams to a minimum at least. Um, that's my only explanation. Okay. So, well, where is he? Where is he? Uh, there he is. He missed me. That was a poor shot. And it's actually an M26, no, M46 with the um, additional fan stuff around the turret to protect it from low penetrating heat rounds from anti-tank close range weapons, I guess. And I have actually the time to reload from cover. I tracked him so he can't move away and I get my sixth kill the sixth official kill so to speak and at this point and and at this point in time it actually seems that now the battle is finally over right okay who called in that artillery strike seriously <laughs> um must have been one of ours i guess out of being bored and so forth we're about to capture the zone and yeah that's it but there is again another tank spawning in and he sees me and he shoots. He could have not seen me. That is definitely a Gaijin bot. That I one shot now. So the name Sydney, it's kind of generic. I guess this was a bot. Nevertheless, let's have a quick look at the post battle results of the Type 74 match. And we can see, well, not too bad. Just 21,000 silver lines and 2,490 research points. So, um, yeah, that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please give this video a like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder.